Joining me is Ernie Wright, visualizer at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Welcome, Ernie. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So give us a brief summary of your multimedia background and your role today at Goddard. So I work in the scientific visualization studio, and we call that the SVS, so we don't have to say that over and over. Um, the studio creates scientific animations and illustrations using data from NASA missions. Um, and these are videos that are specifically data driven. So everything you see is a piece of data from a NASA mission. The data arrives in billions of ones and zeros, night and day. And they're transformed by the scientific visualization studio into animations. You start with, as you, as you mentioned, a ton of data and you figure out the best way to present it. So what is the process like for a video series like the magnetic bubbles on the moon? Well, our job basically is to place that data in context. I mean, when it comes from the spacecraft, it's all just zeros and ones. Um, and so we like to put it in its geographic location um, and we like to make it look a little bit like whatever the data is. So if it's something hot, we'll make it red, and if it's water, we'll make it blue, um, just so it reads for people, um, and it's easy for them to interpret. Um, and we also are storytellers. Um, you'd think we could just paste this data onto a ball and say, you know, here it is, but we really have to tell the story of the data, what it means, what its significance is, um, why people should care about it. It is Photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Um, so I have to translate the data into forms that my software can understand. We use um, basically movie special effects software. We use um, basically movie special effects software. So there's no, there's no science sort of built into the software. I have to tell it what this data is. And so I make it into image maps and things that can be wrapped onto geometry. Um, in 1990, Carl Sagan made this Voyager image famous, his pale blue dot. Here he is on Science Friday talking about it. I thought, there, that's us, a mote of dust in a sunbeam. And uh, it spoke to me. It underscored the tininess, the comparative insignificance of our world and ourselves. Last month, for the first time since 1972, NASA released a blue marble, a single snapshot of the Earth taken from outer space. Then in 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmon made this. And it had wide appeal too. For example, it ended up as the default background on the iPhone. I didn't even know until I bought an iPhone um, and turned it on and kind of did a little happy dance. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. The data arrives in billions of ones and zeros, night and day. And they're transformed by the scientific visualization studio into animations. To us, the really cool thing was the data set. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. The first time since 1972. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is Photoshopped, but it's it has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat. It just didn't, just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat. So I just take Command Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be.